as a researcher, I benefit by hearing the perspective of, of uh, people who are out in the field. How is our research working? What are the next questions we should work on? The other one is for the applied researchers, I know you can learn a lot going to things like Tri-State or Four State or whatever nutrition conference you want to go to. But typically then what you hear is maybe one talk on feeding fat or a talk on forage fiber, and you're hearing the perspective of one person. You don't hear the top researchers debating about the topic. So you get, you get a, a slanted view. We're all slanted. Okay, so you hear my view on something, but you don't hear the people who disagree with me. At ADSA, you can hear everybody's view and kind of synthesize what you think is the best picture. So hello, everyone. This is Luis Ferrero with the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt podcast. And today we have opportunity to discuss two great topics. First, the ADSA meeting. And second, but not less important, how is the nutrition genetics interaction so important to us dairy nutritionists? And to discuss these topics with us, we have Dr. Mike van der Haar, professor at Michigan State University and president of the American Dairy Science Association. Mike, thanks so much for taking the time to visit with us today. But before we begin our discussion, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, first, thanks for having me, Luis. I, uh, I grew up on a uh, dairy farm in Iowa uh, many years ago. Back in the 70s, my dad was a great manager. He has heard in the mid 70s was uh, at 17,500 pounds for rolling herd average, which was really outstanding at the time. So he was a progressive manager and he, he uh, really got his sons involved with every aspect of his farm. So I learned uh, that I love dairy cattle and I love the idea of dairy farming at a pretty young age. But when I hit 20, I discovered I loved learning. And, I, and at some point, I decided I really loved learning about how we could do things better and, and discovering new ways to do things better. So I went to grad school at Iowa State. I uh, then got a job here at Michigan State, and I've been here now for 35 years. Um, yeah, I, my job is, is mostly research, is two-thirds research, one-third teaching. Uh, I've got a great job, and I, I love learning more about how we can... Uh, feed uh, people using dairy cows. Obviously, dairy cows is always our favorite animal, but something that I know that you have been heavily involved, uh, I'm going to say in recent years, but I know that you uh, work with the American Dairy Science Association throughout your career. But for us scientists, the, the national meeting of the American Dairy Science Association is always something very important. We, we always look forward to go there, discuss research, learn new findings, but this year, there's something very special, right, for dairy nutritionists, the Applied Nutrition Day. So tell us more about that, uh, about this idea, and what should we expect about that? Yeah, so one of the things we wanted to do this year was really try to reach out more to the applied nutritionists and provide some things that they would say, hey, this looks like it's worth going to. When I started out... Uh, going to ADSA. My first ADSA meeting was 1982. And for there were a there was a time where a lot of practical nutritionists came to our meeting. I would say over the last 15 years, less and less uh, practical nutritionists, applied dairy nutritionists have been coming to our meetings for various reasons. One is we have meetings like Tri-State Dairy Nutrition Conference, uh, Western Dairy Management Conference, other meetings that they would that they go to. But the other one is that I think maybe we've started to, to focus a little bit more on just research and not making a meeting that was really great for uh, the people working in the field. And we decided that uh, we wanted to do that this year. There's, there are two reasons for it, right? One is that as a researcher, I benefit by hearing the perspective of, of uh, people who are out in the field. How is our research working? What are the next questions we should work on? The other one is for the applied researchers. I know you can learn a lot going to things like Tri-State or Four State or whatever nutrition conference you want to go to. But typically then what you hear is maybe one talk on feeding fat or a talk on forage fiber. And you're hearing the perspective of one person. You don't hear the top researchers debating about the topic. So you get you get a, a slanted view. We're all slanted. OK, 
Okay, so you hear my view on something, but you don't hear the people who disagree with me. At ADSA, you can hear everybody's view and kind of synthesize what you think is the best picture. So uh, we put together this applied nutrition platform, and I do want to give credit uh, also to Corwin Nelson. We started a new program this year where we have a person who is our point person for putting the program together every year, and he and I work together on this. In the morning, we have a session on leveraging high oleic soybeans for dairy cow profitability. Uh, at that session, we're going to have Kevin Harvatine from Penn State talk a little bit about the value of high oleic beans from a researcher's perspective, what he sees. We'll have Alicia Bales, a, a PhD student, a, a graduate of, of uh, Adam Locke's lab here at Michigan State. She's been working in the field now for a year or two, and she's going to talk about how does what she learned in research, apply, how is it actually working when she gets out into the field and feeds cows? And then um, also Lynn Davis from Wisconsin is going to talk about uh, critical knowledge to get the most from high lake beans uh, when you roast them. Then uh, in the afternoon, we have another session, and this session will be looking at um, milk pricing dynamics and strategies for enhancing milk fat production. Adam Locke's going to talk about optimizing milk fat by thinking about how we feed different fats and aligning that with genetic progress. Mike Van Amberg is going to talk about balancing amino acids to optimize milk fat synthesis. And then Norman St. Pierre is going to talk about the economics of butterfat production. At the end, we'll have a panel discussion. So I think it's going to be a great session. Uh, feeding fats is a hot topic right now. And um, I was probably one of the people who took a while to be convinced about this because 10 years ago, I would have said, yeah, I don't know that there's much value in feeding fats to cows. We can pretty much get... 30,000 pounds of milk out of a cow. We don't need to feed any special fat supplements. Well, now we're shooting for even higher, and I, I can see the value. I, I've been looking at Adam's research. I, I can see the value of this. And, man, the high oleic beans, there's some real potential there. Absolutely. Certainly two hot topics. The high oleic, probably a more recent topic. Uh, here in Wisconsin, at least, people talk a lot about that. I'm sure it's true for Michigan farmers as well. And obviously, feeding fat and improving milk fat is a topic that probably will never get old, right? So I don't see how that would be uh, bad at all for an applied nutritionist to join us during the meeting and discuss that. But Mike, tell us more about the meeting. In addition to this uh, very nice Supply day. What 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 else is going on during the meeting that some of the nutritionists joining us uh, could take home uh, as a, a great topic for discussion and studying and even uh, applying that with their customers? Yeah. So one of the things we're going to do this year is focus kind of on the future. It's twenty twenty five. What might daring be like in 2015? This isn't something that's directly, immediately applicable in all cases, but some of it is. Uh, Sunday night, we're having an opening session where we're going to talk about envisioning the future of milk, uh, of farms, and of cows. I'll have a, a leading uh, dairy food scientist who will talk about a bunch of interesting stuff related to where things are headed in, in terms of consumer preferences and and uh, how milk might enhance human diets. Uh, um, we'll have uh, somebody talk about artificial intelligence and how it's going to be used on farms as they see it. And that's that could happen within just a few. Well, it's already starting. Right. But it could especially become a big deal within five years. And then we'll also talk about what are cows going to be like in a few years and where are they where are things headed right now? Um, my research on feed efficiency, the genomics of feed efficiency is now makes up 21% of uh, the uh, um, net merit value of a sire. And we are changing cows faster and faster than we ever did before because of breeding technologies uh, and reproductive technologies. And these are the cows that nutritionists, these are the ones we have to feed. We have to figure out how the best way to feed them. Uh, so I think that's a, a session that will be useful. Um, and then Monday night, there will be a hot topic talking more about cows of the future. There will be a session on Tuesday dealing with uh, methodology, what kind of information you're getting from feed labs. There will be a session Tuesday afternoon 
uh, honoring Don Bites. Uh, maybe most applied nutritionists don't know that name, but he's been a leader in the field of dairy nutrition for 50 years. Uh, made a difference on thinking about milk fever and ketosis and fatty liver and bovine immunology. And uh, we're going to honor him and and uh, have some talks uh, on that. And, and then, um, yeah, Wednesday, there will be a little bit more on uh, gut health and ruminants. And, and uh, so I think there, there are a number of things that will be useful, but Monday is the big day for applied nutrition. Yeah, no, absolutely. A lot of great topics there. And uh, well, I'll, I'll certainly be attending most of those discussions and hopefully bringing some knowledge back home. Uh, but, but let's go back to your work. You mentioned a little bit of this interaction between nutrition and genetics that you have been uh, working on. So tell us more about that, the importance of this work. And, and are there any new developments that we should keep an eye out for? Yeah, so I had the pleasure of working with geneticists for the last 15 years. Uh, Kent Weigel at Wisconsin, Rob Templeman at MSU, or the, especially the, my collaborators. And um, we've been, uh, in, in, before genomics, we really couldn't breed for feed efficiency. We knew how much milk a sire's daughters might produce relative to herd mates, but we didn't know how much they would eat. And over the last 15 years, we've measured feed intake on thousands of cows. I'm not sure what we're up to now, probably maybe eight, 9,000 in our database. Uh, depends on whether you just count U.S. cows or not. And um, yeah, we found some important, uh, important information. One, uh, there is a significant portion of feed intake that we can't explain based on a cow's milk production, her body weight, and whether she's gaining or losing body weight. And that we call residual feed intake. Some cows eat less than expected. For whatever reason, we don't know, but those are the cows we'd like to have in the future. Okay, so that's breeding for, uh, we, we call the trait feed saved uh, in our uh, breeding values. Uh, and so feed saved for, for negative RFI. Uh, and that's about 10% of the of the net merit right now. And then the other thing is we've learned that large cows and the maintenance requirement of cows is more than we even thought it was. So over the last uh, 20, 30 years, we've, we've learned, this isn't from our study, but we've learned that the maintenance requirement of cows has been increasing as we bred for higher production. And then also we've been breeding for larger cows. Okay. At, a, at one time, I probably went onto a farm and said, oh, those are big cows, nice big cows. I love those cows. Now I realize, no, nah, no, no. They're eating more than we thought because of their maintenance requirement per kilo of body weight. And they're just eating more because they're bigger. And um, because of, of our data, uh, we are now breeding for, some, if you use net merit, you're actually breeding for smaller cows. So we're going to save feed because the cows are smaller and because they eat less than expected. And that's been, uh, that was implemented in the net merit in 2021. It's just hugely rewarding to think that your research could have an impact on how we breed cows for the future and really uh, making a difference all across the country and even in the world. It doesn't have to be this hard to keep cows pregnant. At Virtus Nutrition, we understand the negative impact that lost pregnancies have on a dairy's economics. Every failed pregnancy means more money spent on expensive semen, additional replacements to raise, and fewer valuable beef calves to sell. Feed what embryos need. Strata with EPA DHA, the pregnancy nutrient. No, absolutely. I think that, that that's a great, a great topic, great research, and uh, farmers are certainly already making uh, great use of that. So, so tell us, what's next from that perspective between nutrition and genetics? What should we focus on for the next 25 years? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I think, uh, so first off, the hot topic right now is methane. Not of much economic importance to dairy farmers now, but, you know, things change. And in 10 years, it might be really important. And uh, we're collecting data right now, this time under the leadership of Wisconsin, uh, uh, Francisco Pina Garicano. And uh, we, we're going to have a lot of data in a few years that shows that you can breed for less methane. It's not going to solve the methane problem, but it can make a difference. And... Um, 
What's also interesting is when we use those machines to measure methane, we can get an idea of how much a cow eats. So we might start to see more, more things happening on farms through sensors or maybe these machines that can measure gases to help get an idea of what cows are eating on farms, um, get even more accurate breeding values for feed efficiency. You know, and there's more to feed efficiency. There's things like longevity and uh, livability on farms. And that's one that I'm particularly interested in right now. I've been thinking about, you know, we breed for productive life. First off, what is an optimal productive life? Some people uh, forget that when we farm with dairy cows, we're not just making milk, we're making beef too. And we want to make quality beef. And I see no problem with uh, a cow getting through three lactations. And then I sell her and and she's in great shape, and I would like to eat her as well. Some people may not appreciate that, but that's that is real life. The last thing you want is for a cow to die on farms, and uh, the older she is, the more likely that's going to happen. Um, and thinking strategically how to feed starch so we can keep cows in the proper body condition is a key part of that. Uh, we don't have time to get into that today, but but uh, there's a bunch of interesting things happening on the interplay of, uh, you know, health and uh, genetics that, uh, that I think really we need to focus more and more on in the future. Absolutely. All great topics. And obviously, a lot of those topics and research from different places around the world will be showcased during the, the, the ADSA meeting. So there is another reason for you to join us there and take advantage of all the good work that will be presented there. Uh, Mike, thanks again for joining us today. I'm sure people will truly enjoy the discussion and learning more about your research as well as everything that you you and Corwin Nelson did to make sure we have this great program at the ADSA meeting. For you at home, thanks for joining our podcast and I hope to see you soon. Thanks. Hey everyone, we are always searching for the latest and greatest research to share weekly. If you have a dairy nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details of your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Thank you and hope to see you soon.